Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another thrilling episode of Cringe Confessional, the only show on the internet where we can explore your darkest moments and most cringe experiences. My name is Coney, but I won't be doing it alone. I have my lovely assistant, CringeBot3000, here to help me. CringeBot, are you ready for some tales? Sure. Whatever. What's wrong, CringeBot? Why is it always cringe? Why can't we ever have uplifting stories? Some personal accomplishments, maybe a funny anecdote or two. Something nice. Well, CringeBot, I think that empathy is, is really key to the human experience. I think it's all just a, a part of being a person, you know? Lamau. Who asked? You did. You asked. Cringe. All right. Let's get to the stories. One time when I was 14, I went on a rugby trip to play games in the UK against good clubs and teams. Flex. We were traveling in a bus and staying in hostels and bunk houses. I've never stayed in a hostel. That is a uniquely European experience. What's that like? They sound gross? Yeah, that sounds disgusting. It's like summer camp? Yeah. One night, me and five other boys are in our room after lights out, cracking jokes, being outrageous, outrageous. and in general saying some outright slanderous things. Outrageous? I don't know why that word is so funny to me. Me and my mates are being outrageous. <laughs> We're in the hostel being outrageous, being damn rock slanderous. Okay, what happened next? I, I think this is a slower moment. I think you said something you shouldn't have, and somebody walked in the room. In the dark, I grabbed my bottle of yolk and made the gesture of shoving into my own ass. Outrageous! It was a good laugh. The next morning, one ratty kid told everyone else that uh -huh. at night I fucked my own ass with a yolk bottle and got IT up my bit hole. How did the TTS get an accent? What a British story. What is a yop bottle, by the way? Oh, yop is a drink? Drinkable yogurt. Yup. Yup! Right up the butthole. No matter how much I defended myself, <laughs> the kids were relentless with the teasing, and I was known as Yoke Bass for at least two weeks. Sure, yeah. I mean, there's always like a very fine line when you go outrageous and do slanderous things. Like, you can't go too far or all your mates are gonna make fun of you, right? I feel like you gotta be a little bit, you gotta hold back a little bit. There's always one kid that takes it too far, and I think that was you. Pretty cringe, honestly. Me and this girl talked to each other before COVID happened, but we never got to really know each other. It's a lot of COVID stories. You guys remember the one from the last time about the guy that didn't get the girl's number? That one still haunts me. I still think about that. So I decided to send her an email because I didn't have her contact information. Now this is a, this is an extension of the last chatting one. chatting over emails like it was texting. Cool. I had liked this girl for a bit, and I finally decided to tell her. Uh-huh. Through email. I got rejected and she said she wanted to just be friends. I decided told from you. that day forward to never speak to her again. Oh, and you met her. Did you meet her and her boyfriend? But that's not where the story ends. Clearly. Over two years later, I was out on a walk to pick my brothers up from school. And guess well, who I see well, also well, picking destiny. their siblings up? You belong together. I decided to walk away slowly as I walked my brothers home and the worst thing happened. What? She called my name really loud to where it would be a douche move if I ignored it. Well, hold on. If she called you, it's not that bad. Wait a minute. She wanted the interaction. This is fine. You're fine. So I turned around and she gave me a hug in front of every single person picking their children up. Sure. She said she missed me and I just responded saying that I did Aww, too. Aw, that's sweet. She told me, you don't still like me, do you? And this isn't a quiet statement. Oh, that it bitch. It was very loud and known to everyone in the vicinity. What? I got tricked. I thought she was being nice to you. This is an AWOL moment. She actually got you. She trapped you, bro. She tricked you. She got you. She got me. I fell for it. I quickly responded no and said some cringe thing like safe travels <laughs> or some other cringe saying. Bon voyage. My little brothers told my mom when we no! got home about it. And I went to my room immediately. To top off the cake, she sent me a winky face in an email as I still use the same email. Dude! Why would she do that to you? All I can assume is that you're a piece of shit. <laughs> to be fair, he literally stopped emailing her. I, uh, I don't know. Not cringe, just a bitch. Oh, this is cringe. He literally ghosted her. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but how much of a friend did he really want to be? Uh, I don't know. I can't speak toward the experience of being a woman. But I feel like if I rejected a guy and he ghosted me, I'd be like, okay, yeah, whatever, I get it. But at the same time, it's got to be really annoying to be a woman 
and have guys only interested in you for that and, and like you can't just be like hey let's be friends and have them still just be friends i get it on both sides but the smiley face is over the line <laughs> that was pretty fucked up also announcing it to everybody there that's uh that's toxic when i was 17 i was in a prestigious singing program Flex. that only selected eight students from the entire county wow, look at you this girl named laura and i in the program were given a duet and we spent time outside Ooh. the program to practice it at her house. Blossoming romance. She asked if we could go see a movie. And I said hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm waiting at the mall. And her mom's car pulls up to drop her off. Cool. Laura steps out of the car and looks absolutely gorgeous. Oh, like a dream. Really dressed up and pretty. Maki up looking perfect. You showed up in your pajamas. The fall is going to be terrible. Yeah, you showed up in pajamas and a Super Mario t-shirt. There's two problems though. I didn't know this was a date, <gasps> and I already have a girlfriend. Well, 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 now you got two girlfriends! I figured the best strategy would be to just immediately let her know I messed up and explain uh, I have a girlfriend tough. and apologize that's for the tough. misunderstanding. That's so tough, she just, oh, do you tell her at the beginning? Oh man, what do you do here? Why would you go see a movie with her? Yeah, I, this is... You lacked foresight here. You know what separates the animals, us from the animals, is, like, being able to know how an action now will affect us down the line. Are you a pig? <laughs> are you a... Are you, are you a human being? You should have known this would happen. I wouldn't get the chance to do it that way. Why not? I get a phone call. <gasps> it's from my girlfriend. What? I can't remember what it was about, but I remember saying I love you. In a way that was very obviously oh, not towards a family well, member or something. Oh, and saw all the happiness oh, drain from oh, Laura's no, face. Laura! I hang up the phone and have no idea what to oh, say. Oh, dude. I apologize and say I really didn't know. Oh, I thought she that says, would be a good out. Oh, no, 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 no. We watch the movie. No! Say nothing after. And she oh, leaves without saying goodbye. You broke her heart. This story has a happy ending at least. What? We made up eventually, and are still friends to this day. That's a shit. We still idea. see movies movie. regularly what? together, and I'm planning on asking her out oh, on a proper ki date soon. Oh, okay, that's kind of nice then. Okay, so you're more than friends, or at least you want it to be more than friends. Okay, what th th twists and turns here? This is a uh, how I met your mother moment, right? Isn't it? this literally sounds like it's from? The I need an update on this, bro. She's tricking you, a wall. She's gonna show up at the date, and she's gonna have her phone in her hand, waiting for you to walk in. She's gonna go like this, and then the second you walk into the mall, I love you. Oh no! Oh my god! I didn't know you're gonna get fucking reverse aronied. Revenge! <laughs> you are gonna get Ralph Wiggumed. I don't like you. I never liked you. That Ralph was spot on. I've watched I've watched this show like 50 times. When I was little, around 8 or 9, I was at a friend's birthday party. We were all in his garage fucking around with a light bulb. What the fuck? What are you fucking around with a light bulb? Like, tossing it? We would pass it around and <laughs> jokingly say I have an idea and then do something slightly funny. <laughs> okay, that's actually kind of funny. Never mind, this is very funny. This is great. Small town moment? Yeah, this is like the number one game in Omaha, Nebraska. They were being silly and outrageous. Yeah, doing some quite slanderous things. He's gonna put the light bulb up of his asshole. <laughs> I have an idea! That's, that's, a, that's not a cool idea. I don't know why, but little kid me oh, decided wait, I was right. to take the don't light do it. bulb, say I've got an idea, <laughs> then proceed to throw the light bulb on the ground and shatter it. <laughs> You've ruined the game for everybody! Not only was it not cool, you also ruined the game and, and it, it, you could injure someone. Directly afterwards, I frantically pleaded <laughs> for everyone not to snitch. We left the shattered remains of the light bulb there and I never heard anything about it again. This is very much a little kid moment where you and your friends are having fun and you maybe get a little bit too excited and then you do something that ruins it for everybody. Same with the guy earlier, actually, with the yacht bottle. This is the same story. It's the same thing here. A little too outrageous, a little too excited, too much cake and ice cream at the birthday party. Hey, Coney. Hi. One time when I was around six years old, I was watching a Disney Channel original cool. movie. The commercial break had just passed, 
I really had to pee, uh -huh. and I was so infatuated by this movie. Okay. I cannot remember what this movie was, or what was so interesting about it, uh -huh. but I could not take my eyes off of it. Okay, we had a good run. We made it an hour and ten minutes into the stream, but unfortunately, I think our time of uh, excrement-free viewing has come to an end. I'm panicking. I have yeah. to pee, but this movie is just so good. I can't miss a second of it. It's a Disney Channel original movie? It's not even an actual Disney movie? High School Musical? Brink? Even Stevens the movie? So we have to remember, this had to be before like DVR or pausing live TV. What could it, Lizzie McGuire? What could it be? And then it hits me. The closet. No. I decide to piss on my closet floor and continue watching the movie. Why? I am a genius, I think to what myself. What the fuck? Wrong. My mom found out the next day, grounded me for a month, put a sign on my closet door that said, do not pee in the closet. That was too high up for me to reach. My closet had a residue pee smell for a while. I had friends come <laughs> over who saw the sign and my mom had to explain it to she them as well. She would take it down for your friends? Oh my god. She wouldn't even take it down for your friend. She wanted you humiliated. She tried to ruin your life. What kills me is she thought that was necessary. Like you were going to go do it again and you see the sign. You're like, ah, right, right, yeah. Mom, please take the sign down. Mom, please. Mom, you don't understand. Shia LaBeouf is a vision in even Stevens the movie. Why did bro not pause the movie? See, this is a generational diff. You don't understand. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what the play is here. I really want to know what the movie was. I've never been this excited to watch a movie, let alone a Disney Channel original movie. When I was eight, I went to a water resort with my family. After a few slides and time in the wave pool, Kalahari's fun, we by the saw way. one water slide that was normally extremely packed with a really short Ooh, line. Somebody dumped I had the, to use the, the bathroom pool, right? at the time. Oh my but I knew we couldn't miss this opportunity, so I tried to hold it in. Keen, I want you to know you did a great job tonight, but you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. Maybe you should have spaced them out a little bit, huh? Two in a row, Keen? We can't hold it in. We held in the P stories as long as we could, but now here comes the flood. Cut to near the end of the line, multiple flights of stairs up later, and my need to pee was becoming extreme. And at this point, Bro. we were so close to the end of the line, and there were so many people behind us that uh -huh. I could not leave the line, yeah. so I just yeah. had to keep holding it in. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually, I couldn't hold it oh in, and I had to let oh it Oh my free. god, and you're in the line so everybody knows who you are, and they've been standing with you for a while, so you have this shared sense of identity, so they know who you are, and you gotta keep waiting in the line. All I could do was stand oh, in complete shame as no. the liquid dripped down my leg. Oh, like a sim, like the sims do if you don't take them to the bathroom. Because of the additional water also dripping, oh. no one around me even noticed I was peeing. Oh, that's okay. No, I was I, I was actually going to suggest this. Like, if you're that age, if your pants are, like, still dripping, like, you just got off a slide, you can just pee down your leg. It's not ideal. You don't want that. The issue here is, did somebody smell it? When the ride was over, oh. my family headed to the bathroom. Oh. <laughs> but I Nobody suddenly knew. didn't have to go. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's not cringe. You were a kid who had to pee. What if it's dark yellow? <laughs> okay, well, then I don't know if anybody's looking. No, it's a good ending. This isn't cringe. You're just a kid that had to pee. It's fine. It's gross, but whatever. If you're a kid, you can pee in the pool. It's not that you can. It's that it's not the worst thing in the world. Also, he didn't pee in the pool. He peed on the stairs up to the pool. However, I can't say the same for the people below me. Wait, how did I miss this detail? All I could do was stand in complete shame as Wait the liquid minute. dripped down my legs. Wait a minute. Along with the water Wait from a minute. previous slides and the pool. Because of the additional water also dripping... No one around me even noticed I was peeing. However, I can't say the same for the people below me. Oh my god. How did I miss that critical detail? Did that just not come up? Did I accidentally skip it? Or did that- was that ever said? That changes everything. How did I miss that? No, ab abort. The <laughs> everything I said before, I was lying. Do not pee. Do not- hold it in. Oh my god. Back in high school, I had an on and off crush. Cool. We were both in marching band, 
and band was weird when it came to relationships. Yeah. Yeah, band kids are fucking weird. One day my junior band year, kids are always I like was really going through a rough time with reason. my family, and before one of our performances she noticed I was down, so I told her about it. Sure. She gave me a hug and told me it was going to be alright. While we were hugging, I said this to her, and I will never forget it. I love it when they do this. I can't have children. She backs up, <laughs> yells, what the fuck, and walks away. To this day I have no idea why I what? said that. It's been six years since that happened. Why did you do that? She comforted you in your time of need. That doesn't, that wasn't why you were sad? I don't even know how to talk. I don't know how to respond to this. How do you react to this? That's it. That's the end of the story. What the fuck? I don't believe this story. This can't be real. Maybe it's I refuse to have children. Maybe maybe he meant to say like I don't want kids, which is weird enough. Why did he say that? Dude, ban kids. We need to eliminate arts from our schools. Holy shit, dude. Hey Coney and Chad, Hi. here's a little tale from my childhood. Thanks, Me and wait. my then girlfriend at the time were hanging out in my dad's house. Ooh. We would play Black Ops 2 zombies anytime we hung out and it was super fun. Mm -hmm. But we were obviously quite loud. Quite. As kids playing video games tend to be. Of course. After we dropped my girlfriend back home. My dad came up to me and said, hey, I know you have your own room and all, but I don't want you guys doing that in my house. <laughs> I assumed he meant playing Call of Duty. So the next time I spoke to my girlfriend, I said we couldn't play zombies anymore. Ooh. My dad still to this day assumes I was crushing slides at the right age of 12. I am now 20 and have become the most oblivious person when it comes to relationships. Oh. Thanks for hearing me out. I can no longer play COD Zombies without fear of my father overhearing. Crushing Sliz? I've never heard that. It's not just me? Okay. I don't know how you can get those two things mixed up. What were you- what, what was the sound you were making playing Call of Duty Zombies? Is your dad a virgin? <laughs> what the fuck? On me, on me? <laughs> like, I can't even make this, these jokes because I haven't played COD. I'm not that generation. So I don't even know the things that you would say. He's knocked? I don't... <laughs> the zombies were probably moaning a lot. Your dad is so stupid. You and your girlfriend are up there and he hears like 30 guys moaning. He thinks they're climbing in through the window. <laughs> hey, can you please not have that happen in my house? <laughs> All right, I, I, I mean, like, I know a lot of houses, like, with the open door policy, right? It's like, you can't, don't close the door, right? He probably thought they were real zombies. Oh, so dad thinks they're raising the dead. Dad thinks they're not having sex. He thinks they're performing some uh, necromancy. Okay. Dad is a, a paladin. <laughs> dad is a cleric. When I was younger, my parents wouldn't let me watch their night. copy of Dirty Dancing, which was weird. Not that they let me watch most movies, and my friends said it wasn't that bad of a movie. It's not that bad. So one day while they went to the store, my brothers and I decided to turn it on. Uh-huh. Now I know that you were thinking it was probably a porno, but it wasn't. It was a sex tape. Oh my god. It wasn't your parents though, right? My brothers and I watched in horror as we watched our parents' sex tape. They still have this tape and we've never told them. Oh my god. Okay. Why in the fuck would you leave that tape out? There surely are better places to hide a VHS tape. So they filmed over Dirty Dancing? Why don't you film over like, I don't know, Amadeus? <laughs> film over like My Left Foot. Like a boring ass movie a kid's not gonna watch. Of course if a kid says not- Oh my god, dude. This, this is fucked up because this could happen to anyone. <laughs> like, any parent that does that, like, any fucking parent could do this. And a kid would be like, oh my god, I want to watch that movie now because the parents are telling me not to do it. Like, this is a parent diff. That's unbelievable. Why did you watch it? I mean, I think I would turn that off. For, well, I don't know. I guess if you're that young, you don't even know what a movie is. Like, at that point, you don't know what a movie is, right? So you're like, this is a weird intro. Usually, it's like, coming soon to VHS, right? <laughs> you think it's like a weird ad. And then your mom walks into the frame, and you're like, oh, fuck! 
That's fucked up. Wouldn't you recognize their room? D yeah, that's actually very scary. I, I actually might think it's like a horror film. If I see the room, I wouldn't even think of sex first, I think. This one's really bad. This one's, you have to tell them, right? At some point in your life, you have to tell them. I watched it. You remember that Verdi dancing VHS? Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> so a few years ago, I was in a church camp where we all went down to Dayton for the week to learn about God. We were <laughs> right. in hotels with a group of kids our same age and gender. Uh-huh. So me and the group of boys I was in went with our chaperone to find some food. We went to a wings place and walked past a group of girls and they were like they don't know what they're getting into. I hear this and I start panicking. <laughs> Note that we are all 12-13 years <laughs> old. The lady walks up wearing the shortest shorts I'd ever seen and the tightest sports bra ever. Daytona moment. We walked into an off-brand Hooters and ate there at a church camp. Our chaperone told us let's all agree to never speak of this ever again, and I haven't told it to anyone until now. Wait! Yes, I got a burger and it was pretty good. Oh, that's good. Okay. So your your church camp guy took you to a Hooters without knowing. In da Honestly, in Daytona, I don't know where else you could eat. I've been to Daytona. I don't know where you can go that isn't a Hooters or a sexually suggestive. Daytona is a shithole. Could he really not bring you anywhere else? <laughs> I mean, how about, how about Wendy's? Huh? How about going to Wendy's? Let me paint you a picture for you. Not a good start. The year is 2007. The San Diego sun is blazing down and the air smells like styrofoam. Okay. An elementary school aged me is attending a Christian summer camp. There's a lot me of and a swarm Christ of other tonight. kids of varying ages are all standing around under a large tent, waiting for the adults to tell us what to do. Uh -huh. Around this time, some friends and I had a running joke where we would change the lyrics to the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse Hot theme. Hot dog! As cringe as that was, it was always the funniest thing in the world, whenever it came up. I could see that being funny now. No, I, I feel like that that's still funny if it works. Like, if you could make it funny, it's not cringe. I could see that being funny. What did you do? I'm sitting back and going through different words in my limited child vocabulary to find the funniest parody lyrics possible. Uh -huh. Suddenly, I hit a eureka moment, and the perfect joke had been crafted. Okay. As I didn't have any of my friends around at the time, but still needed to share my did discovery, I leaned over to a boy around my age and whispered it's the Mickey Mouse penis house. That was your eureka moment? It, it doesn't even fit the song. You just knew the word penis. As I didn't have any of my friends around at the time, but still needed to share my discovery, I leaned over to a boy around my age. And oh, wait, this wasn't Mickey even your penis. friend. I missed that detail. This was a random kid? That's much different. They don't even know the inside joke. You just went over and told him it's the Mickey Mouse penis house at a Christian camp? I would have thought you were the devil. I was not greeted by laughter. Yeah. Instead, he gazed upon me with an expression of horror yeah. and told me that he was going to tell on me. Yeah, In I would too. Both fear for what could happen if this information was spread to the adults. I would tell on you too. Of the lack of appreciation <laughs> for the joke. I did the only reasonable thing possible and get this kid in the nose as to disable his ability to rat me out. Unfortunately, my strategy did not work the way I had intended. I was swiftly punished to the full extent of the church and had to personally apologize to the kid and his parents. It's like one of those games where somebody sees you commit a crime and you have to kill the witness. It's like a hitman thing. What a terrible day for this kid. Some kid leans over, whispers to you, It's the Mickey Mouse penis house. What the fuck? I'm gonna tell somebody you said that. Oh! <laughs> when I was eight years old, I had a friend at my house and we were playing with some plush eyes and toys. Mm -hmm. I had a one comma five foot Bart Simpson plushie. Oh, and me and sick. my friend were making the plush eyes fake fight. Cowabunga. And with that, my friend wanted to join the fight. And he just grabbed Bart by the neck and screamed, You are my worst enemy. And threw him out of the window. <laughs> I never saw Bart Simpson again. <laughs> one. Why does your friend hate Bart Simpson? Two, this isn't cringe. This is just a kid being weird, I guess? I don't know. I, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a part in parentheses. Oh my god, this changes things. There's a part in the parentheses that just did not get read. Wait a minute. And with that, my friend wanted to join the fight, and he just grabbed Bart by the neck and screamed, You are my worst enemy, and threw him out of the window. I live on the 21st floor of a 24-story <laughs> building. I never saw Bart Simpson again. Oh my god! Bart's gone! 20 floors down? 
Again, this is just kids playing. Kids do this. It's funny. I wish I could see like a, a thing. I'm, I'm thinking of, you know that Kermit video where Kermit jumps out of that building? Yeah, it's that, but with Bart. Yeah, f not cringe, but delightful. Thank you for your story. <laughs> Poor Bart. Some other kid probably got his day made. Or how, what kind of plush was this? It was probably a plushie. It's fine. If that plushie had like a hard eye, somebody could have been hurt. You ever have one of those plushies with like hard parts? You know what I mean? You throw that shit down 20 stories, boom, could have given a concussion. There was this girl I really liked in school, and we'd been talking for months, and I finally got the courage Good to ask for you. her out. It was the best feeling ever as a kid, so we had planned to go out to our local Denny's the following Friday, and I was so pumped. So cool! I told everyone that I could. It was awesome. <laughs> you shouldn't have told everybody. So it's the Friday, and we're on the date, you and it's have going great, everybody. and she's amazing, and I feel amazing. Great! Food was alright at Stunny's, <laughs> and we're getting- And the food is amazing, because it's Denny's. <laughs> Throwing in that shade at Denny's is crazy. I can't believe you would do that. We love Denny's. And we're getting That's real really close. Funny. And literally just as we're about to kiss, <gasps> she gets a text message and glances at it. And as we're millimeters away from kissing, she's gone. What? She ran out of the Denny's before I even opened my eyes. Oh, she's a superhero. <laughs> you're, you're, you're dating Spider Girl. What the heck? This is an actual Spider-Man moment. Kim Possible? <laughs> Did her beeper go off? It's only the Monday, when I find out what happens. Turns out her mom, who was the receptionist at school, had stolen $11,000 from the school from lunch money. Huh? Donations and the money raised from any raffles we hosted. That girl left the what school the and moved fuck? state. I never saw her again. What? What the fuck? Wait, so you were out on a date, she gets a beep on her phone, and then she sprints away and you never see her again. Because she stole $11,000 from the school. What the fuck? That that girl was in on it. Sweetie, get home as quickly as possible. We're moving. Not really cringe, but good lord. What a terrible missed connection. I can't believe she couldn't kiss you and then go. This is like a movie. Had to move states immediately. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. One time I was at a girl's house watching Mark Kiplier. Cool! We had been good friends for a long time, around a year. We girls were watching him play Tattletale, which was a horror indie game about furbies or something, <laughs> but I guess she thought it was a great time to try and hold my hand. However, she made one fatal mistake. D do people do this? Is this something, like, young people do? Like, instead of watching, like, movies or, like, Disney stuff, or you watch influencers? A fatal mistake. Good eye, chat. What the fuck? I had never felt the touch of a woman and my brain had no idea what to do when she kept motioning for me to hold her hand. Mm -hmm. I eventually came to the conclusion that she wanted <laughs> a high five so I made a swift high five and continued yeah! watching Mark Kiplier. She started laughing like I knew what I had done. She motioned again and again trying to give me the most obvious hints of all time. Oh man. Oh. I high fived her 20 plus times before <laughs> I realized what she was actually trying to do. Needless to say, she didn't try to high-five me anymore after that. 20 times? <laughs> Surely after 8, do you know what's going on? What the fuck? What? No, at some point, that's her fault. She should grab your hand. At some point, she grabs your hand and clasps it, and you go, Oh. Uh, you know what, though? You know what, though? Uh, it seems like you are oblivious, but I think at the end of the day, she was trying to trick you. Remember that. As we exit this episode of Cringe Confessional. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this episode of Cringe Confessional, guys. We'll be on in the future. Subscribe, and you'll get more of this uh, great content in the future. If you guys want to buy my seminars, I can teach you uh, some self-help, how to up your self-esteem. There are 20 very low payments of only $35.99. You can check it out at Coney.gg, my self-help system will help you attract more women and have more confidence in yourself. You might want to go ahead and give that a look. Thanks for tuning in to Cringe Confessional. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> what a wild night. It's, it's <laughs> I, I <laughs> what an outro. Yeah, I don't know. Okay.